I was just working on this little witch doll here and decided, um, let's get her broom out of the way, to talk about different ways that you can joint an art doll or any kind of doll, a plushie or a teddy bear or something like that. I've got button joints on the arms, so I'll show you how you can do a button joint. I'll also do um, a plastic purchase joint that's in one leg, and then we're also going to do a cotter pin joint that I've put in the other leg here. So I'm going to show you three different joints that I've put all on one doll. Normally you would pick one way and do it on all the joints, but since I had the opportunity, I'll show you all of them on this one thing here. Let's start with the plastic joint. This is a smaller one. They come in different sizes. This one I'm going to say is about a 20 millimeter because it's two centimeters. That's 20 millimeters. And that's the measurement of the disc here. Usually they come in three parts and they go together like this. The washer would click into place once you've got it where you want it. Some of them don't have this um, little side piece here and they're just two pieces and that works too. It just depends on the brand that you buy. Usually they're, they're three pieces like that. And the way that you find out where you want your joint is you kind of have to figure it out. Sometimes your pattern will have a marking. If it tells you what size joint to use, then you can use their marking. But a lot of times, like when I do patterns, I don't know what kind of joint you're going to choose. So I don't put a mark on the pattern piece because it depends on the size of your joint. Um, you can have the joint to be as big as the, the leg here. Um, you can have a bigger joint if you wanted to. And I'm going to do it like this. This particular body has, you can see a little straight edge piece right there. So I know that I want my joint to go right there and I'll even mark that for you. Like right there is where I'm going to put that right in the middle and I'll have to put a hole in the fabric for that. And the same goes for this joint here. And you, for the plastic joints and the cotter pin joints, you need to do this before you stuff. That's very important. I'm going to say right here is where I want that plastic joint to go. So that's where we're aiming for, and you only want to put a hole in one side of the leg, not both. Now there's a couple ways, two ways you can do this. I like to use an awl, A-W-L, to punch a hole in my fabric. You could also use small pointy scissors or something like that, but here's why I prefer the awl. It actually stretches the fibers of the fabric apart and breaks a few of them, whereas the scissors you're breaking a lot more threads and that is more likely to stretch out and cause problems later on where the joint may fall out. So that's why I like to use the awl if you have one, but if you don't, you can use the scissors. And just poke a hole where you need it. And it needs to be big enough for this joint stem. So I'm going to push it all the way up because the awl is, you know, smaller at the top and gets wider. And when you're jointing a doll, for a doll, you want the stem to go into the body area because that's the wider area. If you're doing a puppet, though, puppet arms actually are the opposite. You would have the stem going into the arm because your hand is going to be up inside a puppet and you don't want this sticking into you. So that's a little tip there for puppets if you're making puppets. And I do have a puppet pattern available. And you just put this, I mean, this is very straightforward. I feel kind of silly having to do a video tutorial because a lot of people just intuitively know how to do this. But the tip about using the awl is an important one. Now for this one, there's no hole in the seam here. Sometimes you'll have a little seam opening, but in this one there's not. So I'm going to choose either the front or the back of the seam. It doesn't really matter. And instead of poking into my finger, which could hurt, I'm always going to go up from the inside and then just poke another hole again big enough for that stem to fit through and I have interfacing already if you don't have your inner your your body lined your body and your limb as well it is good to put a little piece of interfacing um, underneath these joints it'll stabilize your fabric and make the joint last longer and I make sure that that's big enough so I've got a stretch fabric here but it really doesn't matter and then push that through and now you want to make sure that you don't have any wrinkles or anything because that will get caught and stuck and then just put your joint pieces on and push down really hard until you've pushed it all the way 
For some of the larger joints that are really hard to click into place and it can be hard on your hands, there is this tool that you can buy at Dollmaker Supplies. It's just a wooden bead with a hole in it so that it fits, you know, that stem fits inside and you can push the joints together. For this one, this one clicked together very easily so I didn't need the tool, but for some bigger ones, especially if you're doing like larger teddy bears, this tool might be handy for you and especially if you have like arthritis or something. So I just wanted to mention that for the plastic joints. It's an option that's available. And that feels like it's as tight as I'm going to be able to get it. So that one's done. And it looks really funny now, but once this is stuffed, it will look much better. Now let's do the other leg with what's called a cotter pin joint. And I bought this little kit off of Amazon and it has different sizes of these little tiny wooden discs. It also has metal washers and it has cotter pins and the pins and the washers work with any of the wood discs here. These are for small joints. You can also buy them larger. I will mention there are other options that use either a wooden or um, a hardboard. Some people take chipboard, which is like a cereal box and glue layers together. All of those work and you can either use it with cotter pins. You could buy the, the pins and the washers at the hardware store. Um, another option that I've done many, many years ago is with large discs you can use rivets so that's something else if you already have a rivet gun you can look that up and see how that's done so I've got two of the wooden discs for one joint two of the metal washers and then the cotter pin and this works very similar to how we did our um, plastic joint just go ahead and figure out where you want it and it helps if you have a big opening in the body and as well as the limb because you're going to need some room to work with this and on this one, I'm going to again go in the back of the seam. It doesn't matter front or back. It's your preference. And you don't need as big a hole because the cotter pin is going to fit through the smaller hole. There's that one. And then again, make sure, this is important, don't poke a hole on this side because then your leg is not going to fit right. So make sure that when you're doing this, especially on the second leg, that you have it on the correct side. So this is the side of the fabric that I need the joint to go into. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. There's actually more leg there. That's good. You could use a bigger disc for this size of leg too. And again a small hole is all I'm going to need. And then these go together just kind of how you would figure. Again I want, we're going to roll up the edges of this pin and we are going to need some pliers, needle nose pliers to do that, and that's going to go inside the body. So I'm going to put, um, you want the metal part of the pin to go up against the metal washer through a disc, and then that goes inside, and that stem is going to come out of the leg. Get that all up flat against the fabric, and then we put that into the body. Now you need to make sure you have good access over here. And that's why a larger hole in the body opening is very helpful. We're going to put the wooden disc first and the metal washer. Okay, and I'm squeezing this with my hand to hold it together. And then I'm going to, if you're familiar with sardine cans, take the longer pin first. That's, see, there's two pins there. Let me see if I can get this out of the way. There's two different um, sides to this cotter pin. And I'm going to roll it up like you would an old school sardine can back when they actually came with a key and you would roll the lid back. That's how we're doing this. And you want to get it as tight as you can and get it up against that wooden disc. And then you do the same thing with the other side. And these joints are not going to be as tight as the plastic joints or the button joint that I'm going to show next. Usually your cotter pin joints are going to be looser. And that one's done. Yeah, the plastic one is much tighter than the cotter pin, but that's okay because that's part of the style of that. And once we stuff it, 
it will fill out and it will be um, a little stiffer. So I've done one leg with a plastic joint, I'll show you on the inside. One leg has a plastic joint in there, one leg has the cotter pin joint in there, and then we're going to do a button joint to attach both arms. I'm going to show a button joint for the arms and with the button joint when it's on the outside of the armor leg you do it in pairs. So I'm going to use some pins here, any kind of sewing pin, and I'm just going to see where I want to position my arms and then take my fabric marking pin to separate that and then just put a little mark where I want my joint to be. I'm going to do that on both arms and the body and that may not show up very well on camera but as long as you can see where you're putting that mark that's all you need and for the arm you just want to get it so that the top of your arm is even with the shoulder and when you're button jointing you're going to be pressing that in so that's how that's going to work and then again put a mark that's just so we know where we need to put the um, the button and the thread and then we don't need those pins anymore Okay, and that's just to help you out with positioning. And for the needle and thread, I'm using a strong thread. Regular sewing thread is not going to be your friend in this case. This one is a, an upholstery, I believe, or a heavy duty. You want something that's a heavy duty upholstery, button and craft, something that is has a lot of um, strength in it so that when you pull on it, it won't break because we're gonna be putting a lot of tension on this thread as it goes through. I'm going to start, and by the way, I've got it double stranded, so two strands. I've got about 18 inches long because we're going to have to go through the body twice. So you need a longer piece, and then it's just knotted at the end. I'm going to go through one of those arm, um, what are we calling that, an arm mark. And I like to secure it to the body really nicely by going through my loop. And now I've got a nice tight knot at the surface there and you can clip the excess threads because we don't need those on there and the arm is going to cover that up okay there's different like you can go through the body first through the arms first I don't think it really matters as long as you make a full circuit so I'm going to go through one arm and it is important that you don't um, by the way this is a long needle I forgot to mention this is a five inch doll needle if you can see it on the ruler there and they do have a little bit of curve to them after you start using them. Um, you just kind of learn to work with that. I've still, I've never found one that doesn't have a curve to it. So you go all the way through the arm one time. And you do want to make sure that your button is going to fit all the way through before you do this. Make sure that your needle and thread fit through your button. And then all the way through one arm. And you don't want to get your threads all crossed. You want to keep them from getting crisscrossed inside. Go through one eye of the button and through the other. You can use a two hole button or four hole, it doesn't matter. And this is where you don't want to put it back in the same hole. You want to come out a little bit, um, about an eighth of an inch, I would say. If you have larger joints, you could put it further away. And then all the way through and come back out. And again, this is where the curved needle is kind of a, a pain. But get it to come back around that mark that you made. Okay, so we've gone all the way through on one arm. And this heavy thread does have, like, it's coarse. So you may have some issues with that. And just kind of play around with it until you get it the way you want it. And pull your button out. Just work it until you got the arm and the button up against the body and I just noticed if it twists around or something make sure that it's not twisted that's an important thing here because if your thread is twisting it's not going to um, you're not going to be able to pull it it's going to create knots inside and you can't really do much about it so make sure it's not twisting you can leave this away from the body for now or go ahead and pull it in it doesn't matter that's your preference do the same thing on the other arm. Yep. Don't forget the button. Make sure you go through both holes of the button. I often forget and then have to restart. 
coming back out as close to that mark as I can. I like upholstery thread for this because upholstery thread is made of nylon and it's more slippery. This is actually a heavy duty um, polyester so it's more grippy, has more friction to it, but it works too. And I'm using the red thread so that you can see what I'm doing. Normally you would match your thread to your button or your fabric or whatever. I'm just using a contrast so you can really see what's going on here. Now we're to the part where we have to come back out through here and come out one of the holes in this button. And it is tricky, just keep doing it until you get it. Sometimes you might actually get it on the first try. Um, I usually don't. That wasn't too bad that time. And now we really need to tighten things up. Again, make sure your threads are all even and not getting twisted anywhere. Give it a good squeeze and pull all the slack out of your thread. And you'll see when you're doing the button joint, you need to make sure that your limbs and the torso are stuffed very firmly because it's really going to put a squeeze on it. When I did the legs, I did a plastic joint here and a cotter pin joint, and you can see how wide the hips are. If I had done a button joint there, it would really pull those hips in and give it a much more humanish figure. This is a really, you know, very hippie doll, but I'm making a witch doll with this one, or you can do a gremlin or a fairy, and it, the hippiness doesn't bother me for those. So I kind of like it more of the froggy leg, but that's something to consider a button joint does pull in tightly. So it's good to have it very well stuffed. And I'm gonna go through one more time. You don't have to, you could actually finish. If you're using the strong thread, you could have it finished at this point and it will hold. But especially if you're doing something for children, you wanna go ahead and go through again and make sure that it is extra, um, give it extra strength with another pass through. So that means we're doing two loops. I got lucky and, and hit the buttonhole that time. And make sure that this is not, you know, I had a little knot forming there. Make sure that it's not knotted. And sometimes it helps to separate threads and pull each one separately. There we go. Now I'm going to come back through again and I'm going to end in here where I started. So go back through my buttonhole. and come out just in that general area so that I can tie a knot. This particular doll will have a, um, a dress on, so it's not really gonna show. If I wanted to put the knot somewhere on the body, I could. But just in case it is going to show on yours, I'll show you how to try to get it where it's inconspicuous. And I should mention here that I do have a stick here to make sure that the head doesn't wobble around. That's why it's, it's given me a really hard time to get around that. And I see my needle right there. I just have to get it to come out and not snag my fabric. Okay, give it another tight pull. Make sure we didn't lose any of our tension. And now you can just get that arm out of the way and do a surface knot. And that's where you hold the loop before you pull that tight, go through the first loop and then through the second loop. And then when you pull gently on your thread, you get a knot right there at the surface. And you can just put your needle in and pull it really tight, cut it at the surface and the thread disappears. So that's the button joint. The buttons are visible. If you had four hole button, you would use each of the four holes instead of going through the two holes twice. That's um, your choice there, however you want to do that. But that's what a button joint will look like. You can use bigger buttons. You can use smaller buttons. And then the arms have enough friction that when you move them, they'll hold in place. You don't want to get them too twisted up, but that's how a button joint works. So there you go, three different ways to joint an art doll, a plushie, any kind of fabric doll. Three different joints using purchased plastic joints. You could get the hardwood and cotter pin joints. 
I'll link to those in the description, or you could use buttons like I showed with the arms. So do it however you want. They all have a similar outcome. Thank you.